All right, so here's uh, y equals negative cosecant 4x. One thing to keep in mind for this guy is that the cosecant of 4x is equal to 1 over sine 4x. So <clears throat> there's a lot of different ways to graph these. Um, and I'm going to, what I like to do is graph the sine curve. And then from the sine curve, if I know what the sine curve is, I can graph the cosecant curve. I'll show you how. Uh, so here's here's what I would do. I would go ahead and I would look at the amplitude, the period, and the interval for sine of x, the sine of 4x. So let's grab all these. Whoops. Let's leave this guy here. And let's move all these guys down just a little. And, and when I do this, you'll see why it all makes sense. So the amplitude in this case is 1. Let's go with a real pen here. The period is 2 pi divided by 4, which is going to be pi over 2. So our interval would be pi over 2 divided by 4, which is pi over 8. Now I know pi over 8 isn't on our unit circle as we've learned it, but if you set your, if you set your period correctly, and you divide by your interval by 4 correctly you end up with you'll end up with perfectly placed points so 0 pi over 8 2 pi over 8 3 pi over 8 and 4 pi over 8 so here's our points and whoa And so why we're graphing negative 4 sine x. So negative 4 times the sine of 0. Well, negative 4 times the sine of 0 is going to be 0. The sine of 0 is 0. Negative 4 times the sine of, I got that 4 in the wrong spot. And then, so y equals negative sine of 4 times pi over 8. Well, 4 times pi over 8. 4 times pi over 8 is 4 pi over 8, which is 1 half, or pi over 2. So what's the sine of pi over 2? Sine of pi over 2 is 1, but now it's negative 1 because there's a negative sign in front. And all of these guys should work out just the same. Uh, this is going to be 0. Uh, 4 times 3 pi over 8, 12 pi over 8, 12 pi over 8 reduces okay, to 3 pi over 2, so 3 pi over 2 we're at negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, and then this, will, this one, this last guy should put us back all the way around the unit circle back to 2 pi, and 
points. So that's going to be back to zero. So I'm going to actually graph these points here. So this is going to be my pi over 8. Pi over 8. 2 pi over 8, which is pi over 4. Uh, pi, 3 pi over 8. And then uh, pi over 2. So I would keep going by pi over 8 units, and I would keep going this way. I could also go this way by pi over 8 units. Okay, my amplitude is 1, so we'll just we'll mark off. Here's uh, here's 1, and here's negative 1. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to graph my sine curve here uh, for y equals uh, negative sine 4x. Now hang in because there is a method to the madness. So I'm 0, I'm negative 1, I'm 0, I'm 1, 0, negative 1. So here's, here's our graph. It's taking shape. Okay. Looks like this. Here's the cool thing. I know that the cosecant is 1 over the sine. So in other words, the coordinates I'm interested in are the reciprocals of all of these. I need reciprocals of all of these. Well, the cool thing with this is reciprocals. The cool thing is this. I know anywhere I cross the x-axis, I get a vertical asymptote. So there's one right there. There's one right there. There's one right there. And you just mark off everywhere that that guy crosses the x-axis, you mark it off. And then inside these, the reciprocal of 1 and negative 1 are these points. But then I have to also look at the reciprocals of the other points in there. And what's going to happen is it's going to make these upside down U shapes and right side up U shapes. And so by using my sine curve, I was able to determine exactly where my asymptotes would be because that's where the, the sine curve crossed the x-axis. And I was able to figure out exactly where the mins and maxes were for my secant curve or cosecant curve because that's where uh, the maxes and mins are at the max or at the opposites for the sine curve. So so here in red is negative cosecant four x. Okay, negative 3 tangent x minus pi over 2 plus 2. So this is a tricky one. And we're just going to start off focusing on y equals negative 3 tan x. Keep in mind that the trig functions, just like all the other functions you've ever worked with, when we get done graphing 3 tan x, we're going to move our graph two units up. And we're going to move it pi units to the right. So if I can graph 3 tan x first, then I can account for all of the other movements, and I can put it all together at once. So what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to work with 3 tan x. Well, I need the amplitude, period, and frequency, or not f frequency, interval. So I've got an amplitude, a period, and an interval. Well, when you start to answer these questions, remember that for the tangent, there is no amplitude. Remember for the tangent, the period is pi. So this would be pi over 1. And for the interval, we're going to just divide the period by 4. So this would be pi over 4. My xy chart then.
is going to be 0, pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, and pi. So when I put 0 into negative 3 tan x, when I put 0 in for that, then I'm going to have uh, negative 3 times the tangent of 0. And when you're looking at the tangent of 0, you look at the y coordinate over the x coordinate. So in this case, it'll be 0. Then go to pi over 4, negative 3 tan pi over 4. Well, we like tangent of pi over 4. That's just going to be 1. So this guy's going to be negative 3. Negative 3 tan pi over 2. Well, what do you get here? At pi over 2, you look at the y coordinate over the x coordinate. And at pi over 2, the x coordinate is 0. So we are undefined. Then go to 3 pi over 4. Negative 3 times the tangent of negative of, whoops, 3 pi over 4. Well, that's going to be negative 1. And negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. And then lastly, at pi. 3 times the tangent at pi, which again, you're looking at the y-coordinate over the x-coordinate, so that would be 0. So my interval for my graph is going to be the same. It's going to just be pi over 4 units. So here's pi over 4. Here's 2 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4. And 4 pi over 4. And the same going the other direction. So this guy out here would be negative pi. Put in your asymptotes, and if you're graphing this on a single graph, I'll put your asymptotes in very lightly. But we're going to have an asymptote at 0 and an asymptote at pi over 2. Well, if we have an asymptote at positive pi over 2, there's also an asymptote at negative pi over 2. If we have an asymptote at pi, we also have an asymptote at negative pi. Okay? And then we graph our tangent. So at 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 um, oh there's no there's no asymptote at zero. Let me get that guy out of there. So on the back of pi, that's gonna be okay, here we go. I got carried away with my asymptotes. Alright. So at 0, I'm at 0. At pi over 4, I'm at negative 3. So 1, 2, 3. That means then at negative pi over 4, I'm at positive 3. So here's my graph. Okay. Just make one period. Because what's going to happen is this whole graph is going to shift pi units to the right and two units up. So what's going to happen is this graph right here, my, ta my tangent graph, the, the asymptotes shift pi units to the right. So pi units to the right, what does that mean? That means that this asymptote is going to move. Here's pi over 2 units from its original. Here's pi units from the original. So I'm just moving from the original. So I'm at negative pi over 2. I'll move this guy pi units to positive pi over 2. Okay. So what, what, what happens to our graph? It moves from 0 to pi. So here's our graph. That's the, that's the left-right movement part. And then I have to also move 2 units up. So this point right here at the origin now moves up 2 units to right here. So here is what my graph is going to look like. And if I've got one period of my graph, I can make several. And uh, right here, 2 is where I'm now going to be located. So I've got a graph that looks like this. And it's going to look 
this. And so that's what I would do. I would graph your tangent one, just one period of tangent first, and then apply all the translations.